Previously on Homes Inspection. Right above us is the vertical 4 by 4s holding the point load, the biggest weight load. Yeah, what, yeah. what is beneath it? Nothing. You are overloaded on every single circuit in this house. We now found asbestos. We're finding mold. We found plumbing problems. We found electrical nightmare, structural nightmare. It's hard to comprehend how many things are actually wrong with this place. We've opened up a nightmare. We have to fix the nightmare the right way is to gut your whole house. Jeff and Josette lived in a condo, wanted to move up, time to get into a house, I get it. Looked in a beautiful area, found the house they were looking for. It's not a particularly large house, but the way the main floor is set up gives it a, a sort of larger feel because the, um, the structure's been modified to the extent where the dividing walls have been removed um, and opened up the entire space. As soon as we walked in, there was something magical about the, the, the main floor and it's really what drew us to, uh, to the house. Now the home inspector looked at it and said, saggy floors, it's an older home. You know, the doors are crooked, they don't close properly. You know, it's an older home, so it's standard. The two of them thought it was nothing they couldn't handle because the report really said minor issues. There's nothing really wrong with the house. And then I come in. It was bad. Okay, what did we find? Let's see. Mold, asbestos, asbestos beyond asbestos. It's in the plaster. Electrical, HVAC, plumbing, structure, major structural issues right from the foundation to the top of the house. I have the hill caving in the side of the house. Ooh. Shock. I'm in complete shock. I didn't expect. I knew that, you know, according to Mike, last time we saw him, this house should be condemned. And I didn't think he actually meant it. You know, when I talk about this as being bad, think about everything that can be wrong with your house and look at this house. Everything is wrong with the house. Like, how, how can that be? Like one bad reno after another? Yeah, it makes your stomach feel like it's just gonna drop out. Sagging floors. That's nothing. It's, yes, it's structural. It's all kinds of walls that should have been there. Yeah, but you know what? Everyone that touched this house prior to these people did it wrong. It's, it's sad. And we're angry, too. I mean, who do we direct our anger at? I don't know. The contractor, yes. The home inspector, yes. Ourselves, probably a little bit. I mean, yeah. do I regret buying this house? Yes. That house is wrong. I need to make it right, period. This is the beginning of everything. This is the beginning of my bill. This, this one footing alone lets me get proper beams upstairs, point loads down. This is the biggest pad I've ever poured in my life for a point load of this kind. It starts everything. It makes me very happy. Whoever did the construction here are freaking morons, OK? What they did was they started at this point. They slipped their beam in. They started notching because they, they didn't want to. They didn't want to lift the house right. up because the whole floor runs like this, right? Right. It wasn't just that they pulled that wall out, which created that bow effect. It was how they installed all their new beams, which really were not supporting anything. That's the problem. They're not picking it up over there. There's no weight load on this. Yeah. That's why it didn't push right. it down. These two by fours are blockers. They're not even touching the blockers. This isn't even up high enough. This floor should have been jacked up, and all the beams they put in place should have been structurally supported right down to the foundation or a separate footing. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Did you see the jet out? Yeah. This is old. Mm -hmm. Floor planks go right out. So this right. is as old as the house. Which is really funny, eh? It's really strange, because yeah. look at the rot in here. I know. Even look at the header. Like, this is, you're absolutely right. It's the totally original. The header is sitting not even an inch on the brick. Yeah. One thing's for sure, it's got to come down. OK. Once again, the contractor's in here. Look at this. Frickin' yo-yos. Look at that, buddy. Just get a temporary support in? Sure. Yep. Phone me. OK. And then I'm going to come in, and you and I and everyone else here is going to restructure this house. And I'm talking about all the point loads, all the major beams right. that got to be put in, because I saw them at the office. Yeah. 
Okay, and after that, I'll give it back to you, and away you go to finish it. Love it, man. So I got a wonky house. We're gonna have to true this whole second floor up as best as I can. Can I level it? Odds are no. Obviously, someone's done some renos here. This is an older house. There used to be some walls, and they're all gone. Upstairs, um, the, the floor is essentially sinking. First thing is I got to get the floor poured today. I can't pour a floor around wood. So I'm going to take down the landing and the stairs. It's the easiest solution. I got to get more gravel down here, bring it in through that door. It'll make my life a hell of a lot easier. So I'm going to lose this today. We have Angelo. He's actually filled this whole wall in in a couple of days. He's got a little bit left to do there, filling in that corner. Then this wall's done. They can waterproof this wall. We had glass block here. That glass block was so poorly done, I could actually fit my hand over top of it. Not to mention, we have a point load coming down right here. Well, if you look at this joist, it's cut out. Eventually, if any weight was actually put on that, this was going to actually come down. Very, very dangerous. We're filling it in. I've got a truck outside. It's filled with concrete. I still have guys working down here. We still have a lot to do. So I'm not panicking, but I'm a little nervous. I want to make sure I can get this down in a reasonable amount of time. You don't want concrete sitting on the truck. It'll start setting up, and it's no good anymore. We want the same amount right through, right, guys? Double check the whole area. The most stressful part is, I think, right about now, uh, trying to prep for the concrete while the concrete trucks are waiting up front. We're using the laser here to get our, our gravel level to put our uh, insole tarp on top of. That level looks actually perfect. So let's roll that right out there, guys. It's a vapor barrier, and it's an insulation all wrapped in one. We're going to lay it out this way. We're going to actually overlap it six inches. We're going to tape the joints, and then we're going to wrap it up the walls and use it as our expansion joint as well. Ooh, baby. So this agilia saves us so much time. There's no troweling involved anymore. It's unbelievable. Yep. You just basically, you're using a couple of small tools. You're just leveling it out, letting it self-level itself, just making sure you have the right thickness, and away you go. Yep. That's a good bed of concrete. The final step here is a curing compound yeah. to lock the moisture in and prevent evaporation from the surface, and that'll give us a nice, clean surface with no cracks. It took a long time to get to this point. All the demo, everything we had to fix, the footings are in place, the concrete floor has been poured. Now we start to build upwards. Get the string line on either end of this beam for me. Carl, come down here. I want you to pin it to the underside here, OK? Just to the side, but right at the bottom. I'm just trying to see if there's any kind of bow in this beam at all. The first floor wasn't so bad, so we're just going to start truing it up. Then Mike can come in when we start jacking up the second floor. So this is where the sag is. Let's just see. Just under a quarter inch. Can you see that? We'll just start jacking. I'm not trying to level this floor by any means. It's almost a 100-year-old house. There's no way I'm going to get this floor level unless I redo the whole thing, which we're not doing. So I'm going to actually just get it true, which means we're going to try and take all the little bellies out of it. The reason we're uh, basically putting these 2 by 6s up is so that this beam will turn on its side. It's not going to cripple and fall and, you know, fall on anyone and hurt them. Go by my lead. I'm going to crank it, then I'm going to let you crank it. I want you to go two down as well, right? Okay, the same thing. When I crank this, these are going to be affected. So I'll go slowly. OK, you ready? Yes, sir. I'm watching. OK, go ahead. Awesome watching that move. Yeah. Is it is it going up? Yeah. yeah, you're um you're getting really good. You're down to about an eighth left to go on the floor in the center. I'm gonna crank it up one more time, okay? Carl's end's gotta go up though. Yeah, we know. Carl's cranking slow. We have two different methods here. One is a string method and one is the laser level. Now the laser level will always show you level, where the string will show you true. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. We're good right there? Yeah, man. What we've done is we went tight off each end where the actual joists have stayed true over the years and are worried about the middle. So when I jack that, the middle's going to raise up, the ends are going to stay, and I should be able to raise that floor right to my string line. It looks good. It looks really good, actually. Oh, yeah, look at that. Along, 
That's about as good as we're going to get it. We're jacking the second floor up today, so I'm feeling better. We're actually back to the point where we originally came here for. We have the welders here to flip the column over on the left-hand side of the house here. We're pulling the column out of the wall there and rotating it 90 degrees to get the face out so the structural integrity is still there. We need pockets on the metal beam to support the beam coming right across in front of the stairs here. They need to weld that on today too, and then their job is done. So we have a big day today. Mike's coming in at any point, so I'd like to get this, at least the support beams in, so when he gets here, we can actually start jacking this thing. Make him a happy man. Damon's put the jack posts on both sides of the old beams. That way, we can jack up the entire second floor, and they'll act as a temporary structure until we get the new beams in. There's no way I can level it 100% because the house has gone cockeyed. But I can true up those floors, and I can make it last forever. OK, so you guys give a full crank right now. Once we true up the floor and all the old beams are removed, we'll install the three new engineered beams and the structure that carries the weight load directly down to the foundation. OK, let's go halfway. Ready? Yeah. Nice sound, eh? Yeah. Let's get that measurement right there. 15 and 3 eighths. OK, I got uh, 15 and an eighth. That's good. Look at how much we're off that beam, guys. Yeah. Oh. OK, let's remove the beam. As far as I'm concerned, once I jack this floor, more than likely the ceiling upstairs is going to be fine. I'll cross that path when I get there. OK, right outside. OK, boys? This is kid stuff. Not hard. You know, when you're playing with structure, make sure you bring in someone who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, they put posts in wrong, and the house can cave in. That's usually not a good thing. Why do I see earth? It's, it's actually wood and debris coming in from all the gaps. Like, you can see basically daylight through there. Well, this sucks because it's exactly what I thought. They took the old porch, closed it in, uh, opened it up, put the beam in and make oh, it look like, windows. oh, yeah, look at it. It's beautiful. It's long. It's yeah. open concept. Everything is freaking wrong. To build right over the old porch is an issue because I don't know if wood is touching earth in any which way or form. Did you look? I did. It's not. I don't see it touching earth, but I can only see in a certain distance. Well, I need to see how they closed it in. Look at the sheathing. It is so molded yeah. on the inside all the way around. Look at the brick wall. Oh, that ties in, doesn't it's it? It's caving in. Is it? It's caving oh, in. Oh, you're right, it is. Oh. Buddy, that's below grade there. That's her driveway next door. I know. It's pushing that wall, and just like it did this wall right. here, it's, already, it's almost completely caved in on the underside of the porch. Oh, my god, buddy. Houston, we have a problem. Here's the old deck. They basically took out the front wall, went all th through all this work, and then just boarded in the porch. They did the plumbing wrong. They did the electrical wrong. They did the structure wrong. They did everything wrong. The walls were going to cave in, and the ceilings were going to fall down. So it was like a house of cards. This is called a micro lamb. What it is is they take strips of wood, they use glue, and they pressurize the hell out of it. So this becomes stronger than an actual piece of lumber the same size. It's what we want to use here. OK. Do the same thing for MJ. You OK, buddy? This is not like you, liar. <laughs> Get a jack post under it right away. I have temporary jack posts holding up my whole second floor but I'm also gonna use them to hold my beams in place. So what we've done is we've marked them on both sides of the walls here, and when I wanna slide these in, I need to be able to adjust them. Now, MJ and I aren't gonna be sitting here all day with a 500-pound beam on our shoulders trying to adjust it, no. We do it the smart way. We use jack posts, that way we're able to manipulate it a little bit and get it exactly where we want it. Oh, here we go. Okay, slide it to me, please, carefully. Carefully, I got an inch to go. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, you're good there. Soon as we're safe with this one, so it doesn't want to cripple over, we'll start on the next one.
Okay, so I'm going up, okay? Now, can you get it up anymore? Oh, hello! That's beautiful. I feel really good about that. So I've done my measurements. I'm actually pretty comfortable that we have this floor exactly trued up. It's a flat surface now. It's not exactly level, but it's a 100-year-old house. I'm happy the way we have it right now. Yeah. Well, psychologically, it's big because that was holding up your main floor. But we have our beams in place. I feel very comfortable now taking the shoring out and walking away with my beams in place, knowing that those beams are not going to move for another 100 years. Now, the last thing I want to do before I start rebuilding this is pull up the floorboards in the porch area to actually see what we're dealing with here. There's the old deck. <laughs> I think this is actually worse than Mike thought. This is a single layer of brick. The double layer of brick has already fallen off here. This is a single layer of brick at this point. None of these joists are sitting on anything. Right now, they're butted up to the end of these bricks right here. Because, of course, they would have sat on the inside layer of the first layer of brick, right? So what does that mean for us? That means for us, I'm floating in midair at this point. The only thing holding me up is the fact that everything's still nailed in back here. Before we can even begin to rebuild the porch area, we have to bench this wall just like we did in the basement. And we also have to pour a foundation under the rest of the porch. What they've done is they put their form up, and now what we have to do is brace it. I can't brace to the existing plywood. It's not supported by anything on the other side. What we have to do is support it off each side against the brick and pile dirt up against it to stop the form from moving. Concrete's going to want to kick it out. Uh, this is a concrete vibrator. It uh, helps disperse all the concrete inside the form and uh, helps eliminate the air so uh, as to let all the concrete fill the form correctly. We're gonna give them a new kitchen. We came up with an idea. It incorporates using this area where the kitchen originally was, but unfortunately we have a window and a door there that interferes with the cupboards. They need maximum storage space here. The only way to get it is by filling this in, filling that door and giving them double doors where the bay window is. They're gonna lose some light, but they gain a kitchen. Smurf. The blocks were frozen, so we're, we're heating them up right now. So that's why we have the uh, salamander heater there to, uh, to heat everything up. You know, I've seen people build walls with frozen bricks, and the whole wall fa falls down after so many courses because the ice melts and uh, creates water inside the mortar, and it'll just belly out. It'll just fall over. Every course by course, the pressure will push it out. These windows are from 1989. I'm not gonna trust that the gas in between the two windows is gonna be any good anymore. It's probably gone, because I can already see condensation in between the two panes. That means my window's already gone. The tile that was used for the front steps is literally disintegrating. Most people sweep leaves and dirt off of their uh, front steps, and we're sweeping the tiles. Insulated tiles are indoor tiles. They should never be used outdoors because um, they do have layers in between them. And uh, when moisture gets into these layers, it freezes, pops, and cracks. Um, they crack up like this, and it's just been, it's like shedding almost. It looks messy, and it's expensive for something that's just going to be ruined in the end anyway. We're going to end up using a flagstone out here because it's not layered. It's actually a, a, a stone that's supposed to be outside. These would look pretty in a kitchen or a hallway, but uh, not so much out here.
So we're going to keep going on the rough end then, and then uh, just before we end up tidying up close to the end, we'll uh, tie all the lines in. OK. Good location. I like that. The original panel was located underneath the uh, staircase, which we weren't really happy with its location. They, they were actually using it to hang clothes in there, which is not too good of an idea. So we've relocated it here simply by adding some pipe along the outside and relocated an extra four feet. Better location. You can end up getting to the breakers if you need to. But our goal is going to be very simple, bring all our feeds to here, and then we're going to end up drilling the back of the panel board and bring the lines through. So the final look is going to be very, very neat, and uh, it's going to end up looking as good as it can. Well, Gary really kicked it in. He had a lot of work to do. He had to get heat runs up into every floor space and actually get some air return grills, because if you remember, there was absolutely no air returns on the main floor. Yep, that was their air return down here. Whoever did the contracting here and decided to leave the return in the floor and just cover it up by a cabinet, big no-no. You don't have enough return. What happens is your, your furnace basically starves for air. We've installed a new furnace. Let's do things properly. Let's get them installed in the, in the right position so that we can bring enough air back to that furnace and supply the house with enough heat. Oh, my god. Look at that was once wood. There's about a million reasons I want to take this off. The thing leaked, it's rotted, it's molded. This is going to be nothing but a headache for the homeowner down the road. I'd rather take it off, brick it back in, insulate it properly, make the house look a little better as well, because this is one ugly eyesore. God, that is a nest and a half. Bait right through the freaking rafters. Ah. Cool. Cool? Cool, it's neat. I now am into spray foam. Everything is about insulating the house properly, and that is what we had to do to insulate this front porch, this prior front porch, into the usable space it is. This is a brick post that does transfer to the outside as well. It will bring cold air into here, so I have to spray foam that. This is my beam. That transfers to the outside of the house. What's that going to mean? The cold will hit the wood and transfer through the wood a bit. So I want to spray foam this zone. So by spray foaming my beams, that eliminates the cold transfer through from the outside in. I now have a thermal break in this house. What it's allowing me to do at this point is finish this job. Drywall, prime the drywall, get it sealed so it's not creating dust in here. Then I can get my hardwood floors in, which allows me to get my kitchen and my baseboards on, which allows me to finish my fireplace, allows me to finish my bathrooms, allows me to finish the house. Yvonne and I are just laying down some detour right now in the bathroom. Um, we're getting ready to do our tiles today. This stuff is really smart because it's uh, waterproofing for your bathroom or wherever you are putting it. It prevents cracking, it's for more durability, it's better adhesion for the tile. Your bottom layer here sticks to the structure of your house, and the top layer here um, it, it adheres your tile to your floor. Remember when I was on the floor measuring down yeah. from the baseboard? <laughs> How low this floor slope? This yeah. is we're, this is good. New skylights. These will be a lot more efficient. Properly insulated. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I spray foamed around the there actual tunnel. So just the tunnel. Yep. Okay. Blue drywall. Love it. We have mold resistant yep. drywall. Blue wood. Love it. This is 
tiles for every single bathroom in this house, so we get the privilege of bringing them in. I don't think they could have picked heavier tiles. It's a consistent stream of moving materials, whether it's drywall, hardwood, tiles. There's 75 boxes of hardwood that we moved in yesterday. It's exhausting. You want to make sure that the moisture level is between 45 and 55 percent humidity. If it's too low, then it'll cause the wood to contract and crack. If it's too high, it'll expand and it'll buckle. So you want whatever is comfortable to you and me is comfortable to your hardwood. This is Canadian maple from Quebec. The best that you can get. Kind that makes maple syrup delicious. And if you lick it, it doesn't taste like maple syrup. <laughs> it tastes like wood. <laughs> this is something I would want in my bathroom any day of the week. We're putting down a new heat pad, which means it's a radiant floor heat. So I want to get it underneath my tiles. What it does is it's a pad that has a wire that runs through it that heats up. It's protected by the coating on it. So what it's doing is it's heating the bottom of the tile, the tile heats up, and basically the heat just radiates out across the whole floor, making the entire floor warm to the touch. It's quite common for us to get in an attic space and see exhaust vents just sort of draped in the attic. And really, that, the problem with that is that it's, it's warm, moist air, which is the, um, a big problem when it comes to the consideration of mold growth in an attic. In the inspection process, so when an inspector is actually doing his walk through a home, um, he can look up at the ceiling, know that there's an exhaust fan in the bathroom, pop his head in the attic, and see where that pipe goes. If it's vented correctly, it'll be vented up into a proper vent with a collar and insulated. Um, but uh, when you, you know, put your head in the attic and you see a pipe just kind of laying loose across the top of the insulation, you know you're going to have an issue there. I like hey. the front closet. Yeah. Now, I'm ending the tiles here, buddy, just right along here. We were sort of playing with the idea. Chris thought here would be a nice finish for the hardwood. I agreed. We stopped it here. So tiles at the front door only? Tiles at the front bring door it, only. Don't bring it beyond this wall, right? Exactly. OK. Uh, alcove. Yeah. Now, this is where a bump out of concrete came. I thought I'd bring it across, give them a bookshelf, a built-in unit. Just turn it into like a, a reading area. Reading area. Because, I mean, with this window, look at this room right here. Like, that's this is why I vaulted the ceiling as well. It actually is... looks really, really good. Window. Before, we didn't have all these vertical bulkheads, right. all these extra yep. pieces. Why? Because the ductwork didn't go through there. To run it properly yeah. means we're going up on the outside of the I house. I have no choice, that's right. Well, you did this good, and you leveled all the ceilings. We Very did. good. Are you having fun today? Yeah. The, the weather's here, anyway. <laughs> the weather's good. OK, so sink cabinets, yeah. dishwasher. So we want to maintain our 42 inches, correct? Yes. OK, we have a 12-inch overhang 12 on inch. this side. We have a 12-inch cabinet plus a 12-inch overhang. That's too much. Yeah. you got to lose the two okay. cabinets, okay. definitely, okay. and cut the countertop back. So even the countertop is then going to be a 36-inch top, right? Or, or even more, because we're going to have a little bit of a bull nose. Yeah. So I'd recommend that. I love the way, you know, the ceiling, the dining room ceiling goes up, the kitchen ceiling. It's, it just gives it character. You guys are doing good. good. I like the cabinets. He's not pointing at me. Thank you. <laughs> Doing good. The existing channel um, had no outside air uh, to allow for combustion, so all the air had to come from the inside of the home. Uh, what that means is the hotter the fire, the quicker the flue gas velocity up the chimney, the more house air was actually taken up the channel as well. Because we have what's considered a direct vent system, all combustion air comes in, burns, and then exhausts up the channel. It's totally isolated from the house. All the heat is 100% beneficial. Uh, there's no loss of heat up the channel. We started the front walls. We've, 
We've got one wall ready for finished coat. Yeah. We've got the other side uh, ready for base coat. Excellent. So you're at three different stages here. Yes, we are. Just so I know, so we're staying out of your way. We won't use the front door. You'll have full access there. Is the tarping good enough for you? Tarping looks good. Yeah. It is yeah. freezing. All it that is. good weather we missed, and we finally get you in here, and it's like minus 20 yeah. today. Unbelievable. I know. Oh, very nice. We got stairs. It feels like a house. We have a roller made from recycled pop bottles, which is actually really nice. I'm loving the way it puts it on the wall. It's 18 inches as well, because the whole house is the same color. So we're not changing colors. I figured let's try a big roller. Just get it on really quick. Pretty soon you're gonna have a roller so big you're just gonna be able to do one roll down that wall. The entire wall. <laughs> quartz is a man-made product. It's 92% quartz, 7% resin. It's compressed into a slab. From that point on, we pretty much treat it like granite. It is cut like granite, polished like granite, etc. but it's extremely strong. It's very narrow through here. If this had been natural stone we were putting in, we wouldn't be able to do it without in one piece. We'd have to have a joint in there because the potential to break through two inside corners is extreme. So uh, with it being quartz, we're fine. We can do it in one piece and get it in there snug and we're away to the races. I like this look. I like staggering it all over the place. I know it's harder work. At the end of the day, she'll love this, though. I mean, it's, it's just a really nice look. Well, it feels a little bit too calm today. I think this is what they call the calm before the storm. We actually have a huge day today. We have to have the fireplace hooked up today with Gary. We have glass being installed by Suburban Glass. We have the kitchen people coming in to do the final touches on the fireplace. A lot of stuff happening today. It's what we have to do. If we don't do this, they're never gonna get home. We have to get them back home. They have a baby. They have a brand new baby that she had while she was out of the house. We have to get them back in today. It's gonna be a hell of a day, but we can do this. All I'm doing is lifting this existing flagstone up so that the first step matches in with all the others because you get used to the stairs coming down. When you get down to this one, it's a bigger drop down. Carrying something or even going up it or down it, someone's gonna fall and hurt themselves. I've never really seen a square railing before. I really, really like it. It just goes with the whole thing in this house. It, everything's square. It does, and it looks beautiful. Yeah, very, very Came nice. Came out nice and strong. I put the hardwood nosing in for you up there. I saw that. That looks awesome. I like the little return at the corner here. That's Correct. really nice. And just I'll finish sanding it up once I nail in these pickets for you. Teo, Teo, Teo. I like what you did with the bed. It's good, buddy. Well, we're almost done. What have we got? Probably a few hours left, eh? Yep. Sherry, my dear. Hi. How are you? 
I'm busy. How are you? He did a good job on these stairs, didn't he? Uh, I did them. You did them? No. No? No. You're going to try and take the credit? Absolutely. Do the rails, too? Yes. Mr. Bennett. You pick the lights? Hey, buddy. How you doing? What's up? Did you pick the lights? Yes, sir. You're freaking kidding me. You like them? Yeah. Nice and soft, right? You it know what I like homey? is that I can see them from this side of the bulkhead. Right. And look at now, we've got a clear. Look how big it looks here. It actually looks really good. It looks huge. Yeah. You know what? This looks really good, guys. It's, it's, uh, it's not a huge kitchen. It's a smaller kitchen, but I really like it. It looks really good. Who did the tiles? Uh, Carl. We brought Carl in for that and help out. I think everyone we have has touched on this house at some point. A little bit of love and a lot yeah. of... How long we been here? Too long, buddy. Six months? How old am I now? I'm looking at my watch. Yeah, that's what we should say is how long we've been here. Good job. I'm really impressed, man. I'm really impressed. You know what? I think the guys deserve a week off after this. They did a great job. I'm really, actually really proud of Adam for taking this job on when I was on, so busy on the other ones, and Sherry for picking up the pieces behind him. You know, they did a great job here. I'm really and proud of uh, she's practically been living here. They both have. Yeah. I saw the cots out back. I told them to pack <laughs> it up today, get them out of here, because the homeowners are coming back home. Good job. Let's get the homeowners. I think they're going to love it. All right. Good job. So I want to take in the side door first. So we're going to go in. We're not going to look left, and I just would like you to walk down the stairs. Wow. Oh, wow. This looks great. Wow. The reason I started you in the basement is, one, I don't want you to see upstairs yet. Uh, two, it everything started with the basement, really, for structure. Now, I believe the last time I had you in, I talked about this wall, what a deflection okay. ratio. Yes, yeah. so we put in a beautiful cinder block wall, completely locked in, engineered, locked into the floor joists all the way up, back filled with concrete to hold the wall in place. Structurally, you have got big footings here, because this was empty. This was mm -hmm. gone. Uh, of course. Not oh. under the stairs. Do you remember it was under the stairs? Yeah. Yeah. With things, the under there. things I remember as I go. Let's go to the uh, furnace room. We can now see under the front porch, oh. which was the big ticket item. Come on, come on over and take yes. a look. I want you to see it. Wow, looks like I can't see. <laughs> I'm gonna need a bit of a ladder. Cool. Seven and a half feet deep. Wow. You we had to, dig to down form. Seven and a half feet. We had to form and pour a concrete Whoa. wall all the way around. We restructured everything. And talking about, you know, this wall being deflected in, that was so important. You've lost about 12 inches of space. And there's nothing I can do about it. We have to do this for structure. I'm not big on doing an internal weeping system. However, I can't dig their driveway. I can't do anything. That's the big driveway. It's a, you know, the earth is above this floor. Right, right, yeah. So we do an internal weeping system. And now all these walls are draped with all the right stuff because it's controlled. If it comes in, it goes down to the sump pump underneath the floor. Okay. Have you noticed your new stairs? Yeah, gorgeous. <laughs> it's nice and light. Well, they match to the maple that's on the floors upstairs, so it's maple stairway as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, I really like the square. Want to see your bathroom? Yes. Yes. It's not a bad bathroom. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Not bad for a basement bathroom. Gorgeous. Right? This is amazing. Yeah, and I love it. Temperature control in here. You have new heat in your floor. It keeps you oh. heated floors. Yes. In the basement bathroom. It's very efficient, actually. This is fantastic. Well, this I is, love it. I couldn't imagine it turning out any better than it did. This is incredible. Well, I'm glad you're happy, and we're only in the basement. Yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to go back outside, and I'm going to take in the front door, because I really want you to see it. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, my god. The place looks unbelievable. Yeah, the last time we were here, the house was gutted to the brick. So we didn't really know what to expect, and we're blown away. It's gorgeous. This looks so good. Yeah. It does. Look this is amazing. It actually, and it looks bigger yeah. than, than when we saw it, you know, torn down. Like, Up. 
This oh, is yeah. new. This, this is, is all new. Yes. Wow. The structure we had to do in here. All new beams, point loads, now displacing the weight properly. Never could have envisioned anything of this magnitude having to be done to the place. When we first came in and when we first started, you know, seeing a few little issues with the house uh, that maybe weren't picked up in the home inspection, it's just, you know, orders of magnitude more. Now, I, I know you were involved in the design of the kitchen because a lot of what things I said is who picked the tile. I love that tile. That's it's this one. Very I good love tile, that tile. Way. Yes. You yeah. picked the yeah, countertops. I, yeah. I love, love what you it. did. So you yeah, really knew what well. you were going to get within the kitchen, right? It wasn't. This is not a surprise, but you do see it. Well, it's a surprise because I mean, we we picked this from a sample this big, yeah. right? But so. we thought it might work together, and it does. It's absolutely stunning. I mean, when we first bought the house, it's, it was completely different, and we fell in love with the open concept and the kitchen, modern looking. But uh, now we walk into this, and this is completely us. Wow, this is gorgeous. I love it. Two sinks. Yeah. I said, who picked the two sinks? I guess you both wanted your own sink. Yeah. Yes. Now that what was happens, our mutual you know, decision. What would you name your daughter? Gabrielle. Gabrielle? Yeah. What happens when Gabrielle gets bigger? She's going to want her sink. She'll share. Basement? <laughs> I, 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 I moved to the basement. Uh, yeah. OK, yeah. somebody had to. So let's start in this bedroom here. OK. This room is a small room. I love the lights. Yeah. Yeah. Sherry? No, I, hey, I swear to God, I picked all the lights. You? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Jeez, man. Jeez. Sorry. You're going to be doing a new show. <laughs> Stealing credit all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Second room's the same. We have a closet. It looks really good. The floors are all leveled. It's all been redone. And it's the reason we did what we did. Look at that square and round. Damon, is that you? Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> square, square, round. Yeah. Nice. You broke it off in the middle. Yeah. I'm telling you. Do you like his lights? Designer yeah. Dan. I know. So we gave you his and hers closet. I don't remember having a his and hers closet before. I'm almost lost now on how it looked in here. You know we, what? It's a stretch, but you guys did have them, didn't you? We did, but yeah. they didn't match. Like one Wasn't was... it side by side, or was it on both sides? It was on, it was both, on both sides. sides. Isn't that funny? Um... OK, who's, who's was whose closet? So the small one was yeah. mine. <laughs> that was, that All was right. the small one. I'm going to make this real simple. Damon, yeah. which one's the small one? Uh, the small one's here, so I know you're going to want that. Yeah. So you <laughs> look at that one. Done. Wow. The little things, eh? That's fantastic. The little oh my things. God. Wow. Look at this. They hang on the wall. They mm -hmm. look good, very functional. They look amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Like, Thank you so it's much. Beautiful. Okay, now you can look at your closet. Yeah. <laughs> Empty. The <Yeah. laughs> We did this on purpose. <laughs> Again, doors to match. I love the square style doors. Come on now, we oh. gotta do something for you. This is awesome. A bit too wow. much for you though, right? You can share this space maybe? I think those four yeah. drawers are yeah, I mine. Think I get one drawer and half a here's, here's what I'm going to guess. You're going to get both closets. He's going to get the closet now. <laughs> this, it's absolutely amazing the amount of effort that, that's gone into this. It's, this place has turned out it's perfect. beyond anything we could think of. So I hope it was worth the seven months. I told you it was going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seven months is a long time, but you know, it certainly feels like this is the place where we want to be. This could have happened to anyone. It's about the house. The house was wrong. We had to make it right. We're moving back home to a safe and sound house, and our baby has her own room now. And it's just, it feels fantastic to come into this house. I mean, I'm sure it's many more people than the guys are here, but like, we can't thank you guys enough. Like, it's just so, it means so much to us. To Jeff and Josette and their new home, their baby Gabrielle, and to everyone who works so hard, I love everyone, man. Cheers. 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 Yeah. That is awesome. That was me. <laughs> <laughs>